What's going on guys? Welcome to Rob's house. I'm going back to a little GoPro action today because I'm going to use the helmet cam uh, to show you guys how to replace your brakes, both your rotors and pads, on a 10th generation Honda Civic. So I'm doing this on Kayla's car today, my wife, uh, the purple Civic. She had a warp rotor, so I bought a whole power stop kit, drilled and slotted rotors. already did one side, I can show you guys. We already got a new one on there on that side. Um, they are marked both whether they're front or rear, but also whether they are driver side or passenger side. So pay attention to that when you're installing them. Uh, but now I'm gonna show you on the passenger side here how to replace these. So let me, uh, let me get the helmet cam on and we'll get started. All right guys, I hope this angle on the camera is good. Um, I'm actually gonna start with the hardest part. So these rotors are held on with a retaining screw. So even when you take this caliper off, they use this alignment screw basically from the factory to align the rotor. Uh, these get a bunch of crap built up behind them. I'm actually going to first spray it with some WD-40 just to get some of the crap that's all around it. Uh, hopefully loosen some of that up. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit it with a ball peen. So you will not be able to take this screw out. If you just try to grab a screwdriver, you're gonna probably actually strip the head off this. Unfortunately, it's a Phillips head, not like an Allen key or a Torx or something like that, which is dumb. I don't know why they did that. You also don't need these. So the easiest way to align your rotor without this is to just screw one of the lug nuts on. Um, so I'll show you when we put the new rotor on how to do that. But basically to break this guy loose, what I'm gonna do is I've got two ball peen hammers here. I've got a smaller one and I've got a larger one. And all I'm gonna do is hold the smaller one against the screw and just hit it. And hopefully that's enough. I did it on the other side and it was kind of hard to get this thing loose, but there we go. Yep. So it'll come right out if you do it that way. Also make sure that you're using the appropriate driver. So kind of weird, but these are a Phillips number three screw. Um, so it's gonna be, I don't know if this is coming through in the helmet cam very well, but make sure you're using a number three. You can see in here, there's some rust that gets kind of built up and it makes it hard to remove these. I'm not gonna reuse these. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna throw them out. There's no point to having them and they're a pain in the, they're a pain in the butt. They get, they get stuck and then you gotta do this. And, they really serve no purpose. Tools you're gonna need to do this job, not much, fortunately. Uh, you're gonna need a 12 millimeter and a 17 millimeter uh, socket. So um, actually, I'm gonna take the 17 and break these loose. So the actual, um, this caliper is a two piece caliper. Sorry, we're gonna start, actually I'm wrong. We're gonna start with the 12. We're gonna start with the 12 and actually remove the caliper first. So the caliper goes over top the pads and the uh, caliper bracket. So it's a two piece style uh, brake system. Nothing difficult here. We're just going to break, oh, break that loose and crush my finger in the process. So um, if you see here, basically it's got this, this like clip and when you rotate it, it'll, it'll basically sit against this metal part here and that'll give you the leverage that you need to, to, to pull it off. So anyway, watch your fingers. Don't do what I just did. Uh, there's one on the bottom here as well. I know this is probably kind of hard to see, but anyway, get those guys out. And then, set those screws aside, we will need those. Uh, then what we're gonna do, and I'm losing, losing daylight here, sorry about that. Uh, we're gonna just pull the caliper off. So, pull our caliper off here. I'm gonna set it aside, so I'm going to actually just kind of finagle it around here and set it on the control arm so it doesn't go anywhere. Uh, now we have to disassemble the caliper bracket assembly. So it's pretty simple, we have these clips that hold the brake pads on. Remember, notice how the the edge of the clip is facing inward. So we're gonna we have new clips with our new uh, brake system. So we're not gonna need that. Now we should be able to slide the pads out. So if we just kind of wiggle on, wiggle these pads on out of here. Um, there's actually quite a bit of life left in these, but unfortunately, since she had a warp rotor, I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna go ahead and do it all since I'm. I gotta replace the rotor anyway, so I gotta take all this stuff off. Might as well put better stuff in here. Uh, next, we have these clips that the uh, pads actually slide on. Uh, we also have replacements of these, so don't worry too much about 
mangling these when you take them off. Not a big deal, All right? You can see they're pretty rusted and corroded and whatnot. Uh, next, we gotta take the actual bracket off so we can get the rotor free. Uh, also pretty easy, but the bracket itself is torqued onto 80 foot pounds per bolt. So they're on there pretty good. So use a breaker bar like I'm doing. Kind of hear it there. And once you got them broken loose, uh, they should come off pretty easy. Switch to switch to the Milwaukee here and pull this guy off. They're on the uh, here. Let me see if I can get the camera here. They're on the back side here, so I just took one out there, and now I got the one on the bottom. All right. Now the bracket will be free. I'm gonna pull the bracket off, and I'm going to douse it and brake clean real quick just to get some of the some of this some of this crap off. Uh, brake clean will evaporate, so don't worry too much about that. Okay. Uh, now, oh, so now we can remove the rotor. We already took the screw out, so the rotor should actually come right off. Uh, if it doesn't, uh, like in this case, this one is a little bit stuck on there. Uh, I'm just gonna take a rubber mallet and hit it. This is pretty common. Uh, when you have a lot of rust buildup, sometimes they'll get kind of stuck. So just take a rubber mallet and uh, make sure you don't drop the caliper here. I don't wanna stress this brake line out. Okay, maybe a little more. There we go. Just had to hit it harder, that's all. I did spray some WD-40 um, onto the, the, the lugs, basically. A lot of crap in there. Man, a lot of crap in there. So anyway, that's our old rotor. That's out. You can actually see some of the WD-40 got in there. I'm going to hit that with some brake cleaner. Get some of that crap off. Okay, so uh, we got our other rotor here. It's gonna be our passenger side rotor. And uh, basically just gonna slide that on. If you want, you can line up the screw for the, um, if you wanna reuse the alignment screw, you can see the hole uh, on the hub. So that just tells me that it kinda has to go on like this. Um, just line it up. Slide right on. Notice how it says front passenger side. So I know we have the right one here. And the way I'm gonna align this, um, just to make it easier for myself, is I am going to take this lug nut and just hand screw it all the way on to hold the rotor straight, kind of. It doesn't have to be perfect. Now we just gotta do everything in reverse order. Uh, other thing we gotta do on this caliper bracket here. Um, they give us these new rubber bushings. Wait, I'm gonna replace, uh, it's also worth noting the square one goes on the, toward the bottom and this ovally shaped one goes on top when you reinstall it. So just pay attention to that when you're taking them off. All right, so this rubber bushing has like a, a little, um, it's got like a re little retaining ring. I don't know if you can kind of see that. So you can slide this guy out and then the bushing will actually just pop right out and then take one of your new ones, okay? And the lip on it goes inside here. So this is a little tricky. You gotta kinda like just smush it in there with your fingers. See, not too bad. I did it pretty quickly. And then uh, reinstall this uh, bolt receiver. So you just push that in and then make sure you slide this rubber over the retaining ring, like so. That's it. So we're doing them on both. All right. Drive this guy back in and just kind of slide the rubber piece over top. Done. Okay. Uh, now we're ready to reinstall. Uh, make sure you have the orientation right. Like I said, this this one toward the top. This perfectly square one toward the bottom. Reinstall this bracket through these two holes. So we had our 
our 17 millimeter bolts here. And you can see they line up on the, on the back side. I'm gonna just do these all the way hand tight. My gloves are shredding themselves apart. So none of this stuff's gonna align perfectly until you have it kind of all the way on, if that makes sense. We're gonna take a torque wrench. We're gonna torque those two bolts to 80 pound feet. Um, so we'll just use our torque wrench here. It's a little awkward, but we have enough clearance. It's one and two. Good to go. Now, we need to install the new clips. So the power stop kit comes with everything we need here. Um, so it comes with all of these clips uh, and the uh, retaining springs that we need for the fronts. Uh, all these clips are the same size, so you're gonna use the same ones in the rear, but the retaining springs seem to be unique to the front. I will confirm when we move on to the rear. All right, a couple components here. New pads, uh, first of all, the wear indicator goes toward the inside if I'm mirroring how they were installed from the factory. The clips, pretty simple. They just kind of like sit in these grooves and they click in on these, on these ridges here. You can kind of see that. Push those into place. Uh, same thing on the top here. And then all I'm gonna do, uh, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a tiny, tiny bit of the provided anti-seize, and I'm just gonna put it in here where the pads actually slide um, so that our pads don't seize up. So we wouldn't want that. Obviously when we're driving, we want our pads to be able to move freely. You don't need to use a lot, just a little dab for, uh, for each groove. So now we're gonna put the pads on. Uh, this is a super simple process. So I'll do the back one first, because it's a little easier when I don't have the front one installed. See what I'm doing back here. They slide right into place. So you just kind of like, it's hard to describe. Just kind of put the bottom ones in and then kind of line up the top and it'll click into place like that. Uh, and then we have these retaining clips that they provide. Remember, this part should go toward the middle, the middle section of each pad. So you just, there's just these little holes that it sits in. So you just kind of line it up there in a hole and then just kind of bend it to get it into the other hole. Simple. And that's pretty much it. Now we can put the caliper back on. Um, put the caliper on. I know there's like a tool um, to actually separate the caliper properly and you know, whatever haters are gonna hate, but I'm just gonna use a set of pliers. Sometimes you can use your hands. Uh, these particular calipers are a little bit stubborn. Um, so I'm just gonna use these pliers to pry the caliper open. It moves, it moves pretty easily. You don't have to apply that much force. And then uh, basically we just slide this guy on here uh, now that we have clearance, right? I'm gonna slide it uh, over top our pads. Maybe, maybe I didn't open it enough. All right, caliper fully open. Slide this guy on, and uh, you can kind of push down on these on the inserts here to get it to line up. They have a little little bit of play, 12 millimeter. I'm just gonna get that started for now while I line up the other one. Sorry guys, I couldn't really get my head in there uh, with this thing on my head, so I just took it off and aligned the bolts. So you got the one here, and there's the uh, one down here. They're both 12 millimeter. Uh, torque them to 25 pounds, and we're done. That's it.
now we can move on to the rear. Migrate all of our tools here. All right, so I've gone ahead and released the parking brake, obviously. That needs to be done. Now, there's one bolt here that looks a little tricky, uh, and that's gonna be this guy right here. I don't know if you can see that, but I'm gonna get a ratchet on it. And this is 17 millimeter that holds the caliper bracket on just like just like the fronts. It looks like on this, it all comes off in one piece uh, because you have the the parking the electronic parking brake involved. You need the extension for the top one, small extension. For the bottom one, we just attach our breaker bar. Uh, again, these are torqued to 80 foot pounds, so they are not the easiest things in the world to get off. But if you have a breaker bar, It'll be just fine. All right, that guy's loose. Let's take Milwaukee, get the rest of the way out. Sorry, I'm angling my head weird. I don't know if I just completely blocked that out. But anyway, there's just two bolts. And then, I think, this whole thing should just slide off. Uh, although we may have to, no, we don't have to separate it. Separate it after it's out. All right. What are we working with here? Uh, okay. We're on jack stands, so I can let me use my jack here to hold this up. Just want to balance this so it doesn't go anywhere. That's all. I'm trying to figure out how to position my light here. Uh, it doesn't look too, too bad. Um, I don't know if they gave me, I don't know if those springs get replaced. Where's my other pads? They do. All right. All right, so those springs definitely come out. I'm gonna assume that we just pry the big ones out. You just pry these out, not too bad. Um, and then that basically loosens up the pads. From what I can tell, yeah, looks like the pad will slide out. Um, we're, we are gonna have to separate the caliper here. All right, so this pad should come out, no problem. And this other pad should also slide out. Uh, you do have to rotate these to get them out because of the indicate the wear indicator here. Ah, and I see that's where if we grab our new pads here. Sorry, I'm learning this as I go, guys. This should be uh, kind of informative. Oh, so they give you replacement ones. I don't know why because this is already pre-installed. Uh, so remember, the one with the spring and the wear indicator is going to go on the inside. So on this side, uh, so these arms should be facing down, the spring should be facing, well, how I have this orientated at least, this should be facing down. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna swing it in like this. Okay, and then, I mean, I have to wiggle it in place, but once I do that, it'll be good. Yeah, there we go. There it is. And the arms go into these little grooves. It's kind of hard to see, but they kind of tuck up underneath it. All right, guys, so we're actually gonna have to use a caliper separating tool for this particular caliper. Um, as you can see, it comes with a whole bunch of different attachments. And this particular attachment is the right size. You can see these grooves will actually line up pretty much perfectly. Uh, so what we're gonna do is basically you put this backing piece on like this, okay? And the way it works is this guy sits on here and we're gonna thread it so that it slides on in here. We can thread it really, really loose. 
we may have to pull this all the way out. So this bracket does come all the way off. So we can take that off so we can get our separator tool in here and get it to seat properly. And then basically we're gonna line it up. And we're gonna back this out until it's tight. And then if we righty tighty this guy, uh, what'll happen is we'll turn it and we'll also compress it. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna push the caliper in, uh, and separate it. And we need to do that so that we have space for our pads, uh, for our new brake pads. Now we can slide this back on and then our pads should fit. And they should have quite a bit of room. Hang on, we gotta swing this one in. Now when I put these guys in, in theory, now we have space, our caliper. Hold it on with one of these. All right guys, so I think I was going about this all wrong. I figured out you can actually put the bracket back on first and place your pads in there. I put some anti-seize obviously where the pads move. And now I'm gonna slide the caliper back on and put our uh, anti-rattle clip, clip back on last. So let me do that real quick. Oh, guys, I'm such an idiot. I made this way harder than it needs to be. These slider pins are removable. I didn't realize that. Um, it's a number seven Allen. So they are torqued to approximately 25 pounds. So not a lot. It didn't make sense to me how to put this back on, but that makes total sense now that these actually come off. Okay, now everything makes perfect sense. So now we can take our caliper and we can kind of just, well, should be able to. All right, let me slide this caliper back on and I'll show you how to finish it. All right, guys, so I struggled for a bit, but I got it. Uh, you do have to compress the piston quite a, quite a bit because figure your, your new brake pads have quite a bit of life compared to the old ones. Uh, so now, I'm gonna put this. All right, guys, so to get this pin in, I think we just push the one side in and pry. All right, guys, I got the rattle clip back on and that's pretty much it. So I'm gonna go do the other side now. A uh, couple tips. First of all, unplug the parking brake. So first of all, disengage the parking brake before you do this, but unplug it so that the connector's out of the way, it doesn't have a lot of slack. You do have to compress the piston a lot um, because your new brake pads are gonna be significantly thicker than your old ones. Make sure you have a caliper tool like I showed. That's pretty much it. Gonna do the other side now and wrap this up for the, the night. As usual, hope this video was helpful and I'll see you guys next time.